Egyptian technology called RSS. <laughs> Holy, Holy moly. I just realized that Glacier just launched in Singapore like two weeks ago. Well, you would have known it earlier if you just looked at your RSS feed. <laughs> in fact, I think I even highlight, you see over here I highlight Singapore. I use this ancient RSS feed reader called Newsboiter. News and I think, I, I think it's fair to say this is the fastest way of seeing what's new. And you can uh, do what I do in highlight terms. Is that clear? Who's using RSS or um, another good one is the YouTube. I think, I think the AWS YouTube, uh, oh, fantastic. I think even though it's XML, uh, uh, the, YouTube, the YouTube AWS channel has also got a lot better. And they, they usually, I, I think there's another channel called Cloud Guru, not AWS. They give a nice roundup of what's new. So, and, and, and I don't know, um, it's better than me telling, reading something off here because a lot of the stuff is quite boring. No, it's really interesting. No, it's boring. <laughs> Actually, the fastest way, right, is just to have Slack, just put the RSS integration, you read it every morning at 9 a.m. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. Slack. Who's, uh, Slack? I, I heard of it. It's the one that kills two gigabytes of RAM, right? Is that the one? <laughs> I've only got uh, eight gigabytes of RAM, so I'm very careful with my Slack. Don't invite me to a Slack group. For phishing attacks. Uh, pardon? I said it's also very popular for phishing attacks. Oh, really? Uh, okay. I'm not a huge fan of... Um, who, who's heard of uh, this thing called... Uh, it's an ancient protocol named IRC. <laughs> I'm on IRC. Is anyone else? Oh, cool. Uh, I'm Hendry on Prenode. I'm on a few networks. Um, you can message me and I'll probably ignore you. <laughs> it's pretty cool like that. <laughs> um, okay, no, where's my talk? Nope, that was, that was my business. Um, so, oh, crap. Let me, let me just make sure I'm in, within time. I just want to keep it short. So, um, this doesn't look right, does it? Does that look better? Oh, crap. One day I've got to figure out xorg. Um, I'll, I'll publish the slide somewhere. So a couple of weeks ago, I was invited as a user group leader to attend this uh, meetup in Seoul, which uh, Amazon uh, sponsored. So thanks, Amazon. I went to Seoul. Who's been to Korea? It's quite great. I like it. Who, Korean food. Um, the climate there is also quite awesome. And I gave a talk there in Korea with other community members, um, just sort of showcasing Singapore telling Singapore, telling people that Singapore is the most awesome place in the world. Which it is. But I also, I also, I used to live in Korea. And I must say, I missed a dish right here. It's a, it's a seafood hot pot. Where the hell can I get this in Singapore? Because it just doesn't taste the same as that gorgeous, gorgeous dish. Uh, pardon? <laughs> It's, it's special, all right? I, I used to live in Korea, so it was, it was great to go back there. But the, the talk I gave is, is a message I want to share with you guys, too, just to reiterate. Um, I work with uh, serverless stuff at, at work uh, for Spool in, uh, in Juchat area. If anyone is in the Juchat area, you should hang out with me. We can talk about AWS stuff. And the, we've used, we've, we've fully embraced serverless. So we, I mean, we've lost, I've lost count of how many Lambda functions we got in the panel. It's very easy to lose count, right? I've, I think it's like something crazy, like 80 or something at the moment. And um, I think to save you guys a lot of trouble, I'm just going to share my experiences of having 80 Lambda functions. What problem we had was coordinating them. And obviously, the, the go-to thing for coordinating serverless stuff is SNS. What does that stand for? Something, something, something. Yeah, that's the one. Um, using SNS is quite painful. Um, uh, let, let, let me just quickly skip ahead. This is basically what your interface looks like, right? It's, it's uh, the SNS message. Um, which you basically uh, encode um, your data as a JSON, and which you which you serial, uh, which you you know stringify and you uh, pass again. And I dare say that's the wrong way to do it. I encourage you 
to think of another way to do it, uh, or the way that I'm doing it, is using um, a standards-based approach, making sure you have a RESTful interface to your Lambda functions. And that is achieved with a thing, yeah, I'm just explaining where, where it fits in there. You still use API Gateway. You actually still use SNS under the hood. But the, it's actually rewriting it so that everything just works. And that, that particular tool to do that is called Apex Up. It's not Golang. It's not, it's not for any particular language. You can use any, you can even be crazy enough and use Python. <laughs> or, uh, Pyth Python 2 or 3. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have doubts. I have doubts. Um, but Apex is um, Apex is a, is a is a tool by this guy, this really brilliant guy named T.J. Holloway Chuck. I stalk him on the internet. He's amazing. Uh, I mean, he's just good, and I don't really look at his stuff that much. But uh, he he is the guy behind ExpressJS, and now he's more into GoLang. But Apex is a reverse proxy that basically abstracts that crazy SNS uh, interface out, and you just basically deal with <coughs> with uh, RESTful types uh, inter inter interfaces. So, you, so basically, you have like nice benefits of that. Your routing is, is really easy. Your local testing becomes easy. The um, uh, another good thing about Apex is that it's really fast to deploy. It's like five seconds to deploy. Uh, you get, it has nice little things like logging. But the most important thing is that you do not, like previously when I, when I talked to people about serverless, the topic that came up was like, oh, you have to re-engineer your, your app for serverless. I don't think that's strictly true nowadays with things like uh, Apex. You can just use the standard request, re request response model. Of course, if you use a crazy effed up stack like Rails with Puma and Sidekick and bullshit, you're going to have a problem. But if you have a standard uh, request response model type application, you can deploy it on Lambda. You can deploy it as a service application, and you can reap the benefits, the glory of, of serverless um, uh, computing, which is like, uh, you know, fine, forget. I'm, I'm not going to go, I can't even remember what the benefits are. They're, they're, they're just awesome <laughs> compared to running an EC2 instance. So that's what I wanted to share with you. So... Um, what did I mention? Oh, yeah. The, the, the other thing you could do is run ECS, um, which I have to do for the Rails app at work, or kind of. Uh, we've kind of run, but we've gotten back to Copistrano. Who uses ECS here? I want to, I want to cry with you. ECS, uh, running Docker, uh, no. Uh, I, don't do it, guys. Go, go serverless. You, you'll thank me later. You'll thank me later. Uh, another thing that's painful about AWS, not, not to poo-poo AWS, but some of their products kind of suck, um, and that one is called API Gateway. <laughs> it is horrible. Um, but, the, um, but the good thing is that Apex can abstract that away, so you just have your standard routing with your, whatever, your Express app or your Golang app, and you don't have to deal with this. What's the politically correct term for bullshit? You don't have to deal with this, which is awesome. Um, Apex has a lot of uh, examples and a whole bu uh, bunch of uh, languages. In fact, you, you don't even have to write any language at all. You can just use static stuff, and it really helps. You know, like deploying a static uh, distribution with S3 and CloudFront can be a bit of a pain. You know, you install Apex up, you configure your key, and you just type up, and your resources are there in five seconds. It's a breath of fresh air. So I really wish, I really wish, yeah, I really like it. So unlike doing blue-green deployments with ECS, which is quite tragically difficult, <laughs> you get blue-green deployments. Who knows what a blue-green deployment is? Hold on, I'm running out. It basically means you don't drop a request, which is a pretty professional way of deploying an app. Most people, I dare say, F it up. But this thing... With serverless, you just get you, you get uh, blue green deployments out of the box, and it's like five less than five seconds. Holy shit, we're living in the future, guys! I couldn't have dreamed it. What what, the, what next? Rockets going from Shanghai to freaking California? It's never going to happen. We're living in the serverless world. 
So yeah, the, the, the great thing about this solution is that, is that uh, you don't have to hire schmucks like me to do your ECS stuff, I dare say. You don't have to worry about ECS instances. You just deploy the serverless so you can fire me, but I'm actually a programmer, so you might want to keep me around. <laughs> saves a lot of time and it saves a lot of money. Like, uh, seriously, we have a couple of production uh, serverless apps at work, and I think we're still well within the, um, what do you call that? The free tier. So, yeah, this is where I invited Korean people to my home. That I was joking, actually. I wouldn't let them come inside my home. No, no. They, if anyone likes drinking, we can continue outside. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That's what I wanted to share. Serverless is really coming of age. Uh, thanks. Oh. Uh, a couple of announcements. I think, Valentine, did you want to... One minute. Well, you got you got a minute. It's uh, WordPress.